Please note that filming text on a whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go. This will help you learn the material in a more interactive way and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that a discrepancy arises between your professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They are merely learning tools to help understand the material. Alright guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, you guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about NMR. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the background information, because why do we do these things? Why do we do things like IR? Why do we do NMR? Why do we do mass spec? Well, these three things are just tests to help us see what type of compound we have, okay? So say we have an unknown compound from like Mars, okay? So we bring back a compound from Mars, we wanna find out what it is. We put it through these three tests. We run an IR on it, an NMR, and a mass spec, okay? So we take the compound, we stick it in an IR machine, and the IR is gonna tell us what type of functional groups are in that compound. So like if it has an amide, an ester, a carboxylic acid, whatever, okay? But it's not gonna tell us anything about connectivity, how that compound is connected. And that's where NMR comes in. NMR is going to tell us how this compound is connected. And the last test we have is mass spec, okay? So we take our unknown compound, we stick it on a scale, which is a mass spec, and it's gonna tell us, hey, your compound is 10 grams, okay? It's just like if I went on a scale, it'd say, hey, you weigh 145 pounds, okay? So these three tests are just things that help us identify what a compound is. And this is really useful for if you have an unknown compound that you're trying to see what that compound is made of and how it's connected. And it's also useful for if you're trying to make something in lab, okay? So say you're trying to make a drug that's a specific compound. So you're gonna do all this work, do all these experiments to make a specific type of compound. And before you can sell it on the market, you have to make sure that you made exactly what you're claiming. So you put it through an IR, an NMR, a mass spec to make sure that it has the right functional groups, it's connected in the exact way you want, and it's the exact weight of the compound that you are expecting, okay? So that's why we do these things. IR to check for functional groups, NMR to check for how the compound is connected, and mass spec to see, hey, how much does this compound weigh, okay? So right now we'll concentrate on NMR. And I think that the best way to learn NMR is just by doing problems. A lot of people will try to teach the theory behind NMR, and it's good to know the theory, but it's a bit too complex to get anything meaningful out of it when you're trying to learn this the first time. Okay, so it's great to know the theory behind it, don't get me wrong, but really the investment that you put into mastering the theory doesn't get paid back with significant return, at least in the beginning, okay? So what I'm gonna teach you is how we practically use NMR. When we run NMR, you aren't thinking about magnetic fields, electrons flipping around, or at least someone at our level isn't thinking that way. Okay, so you just wanna be able to analyze the NMR to find out what compound you have and how it's connected. And you're gonna follow the exact same steps every time we do this, okay? So like I said, I wanna teach this with problems. And that's what these sheets are for. And you'll notice that I have four NMRs on each sheet. One sheet is a hydrogen NMR, the other is a carbon NMR. Can you tell me which sheet is the hydrogen NMR and which sheet is the carbon NMR? Well, is hydrogen NMR big or small numbers? Hydrogen NMR is the sheet with small numbers, okay? Like zero, one, two, three. Carbon NMR is the sheet with the big numbers, like 20, 40, 60, 80, okay? So, hey, let's look at the sheet with the small numbers first, the hydrogen NMR. Okay, so let's look at the one in the upper left-hand corner. And this is what you'll get on an NMR question. It'll be like problem one, NMR. Okay, so example one. You'll be given an NMR graph like this one in the upper left, and you'll also be given the formula for a comp. 